Dark clouds shift to reveal a full moon. The full moon turns an ominous yellow as the camera pans in, and the moon becomes many moons multiplied. Panning out, we see the individual satellite planets were all part of an electronic billboard on the side of a building. Indistinct chatter floats past. A young man crosses in front of the billboard, blue shaggy bangs coming to his nose, eyes downcast, and headphones firmly placed over his ears. He's wearing a black jacket with an emblem on the chest, a circle outlined in a thick red line with four alternating quadrants of white and black on the inside, a large travel bag slung over his shoulders. Flash cut to the tip of a gun, barrel consuming the screen like a cavernous abyss. Light reflects off the edge. Brown eye, wide with terror, running water. A woman sits hunched against a sink with a palm to her head. Her other hand rests on the floor with a loose grip on a gun. We hear a solitary sniffle. A pathetic outcry quickly juxtaposed by an image of smiling kids playing at a claw machine. We see a hanging uniform with the same emblem as the one on the jacket of the boy with headphones. With shaking hands and ragged breaths, the woman raises the gun in both hands to her forehead. Her pupils have dilated to a faint pinprick in her terrified eyes. The woman stills herself with a breath. A running faucet, a screeching wheel of a subway, slowly suppressing the trigger with her finger. The boy with the headphones looks up from the ground, as if somehow sensing the pending danger. The gun drops from the woman's limp hands and clatters against the wooden floor without a shot fired. Welcome to Persona 3. Except I and many others didn't get to experience this wonderfully crafted intro movie in Persona 3 Portable, the, until recently, only available version of Persona 3 on modern consoles. Instead, we got a stilted collage of screenshots captured from the animated opening. Now, there are a lot of versions of Persona 3. The original release in 2006, followed by Persona 3 FES in 2007, which included a number of updates, most notably a playable epilogue known as The Answer. In 2009, we got Persona 3 Portable, the version of the game that was ported in January 2023 to modern consoles. Like a lot of fans onboarded it to the Persona series by 5 and 5 Royal, the re-release of Persona 3 Portable was my first accessible opportunity to experience the genesis of the Persona style most fans associate with the game franchise. Now, I know full well that Personas 1 and 2 exist, and are worthy of discussion, but there isn't a modern port of the first two Persona games, and I haven't played them. And realistically, I think most fans onboarded by 5 and the recent ports of 3 and 4 haven't undertaken the necessary steps to play emulations of those first two. So, Persona 3 Portable is a streamlined version of the base game and was originally released on the PlayStation Portable. It removed the animated cutscenes of the original, altered the presentation style of the life simulation aspects into a more point-and-click visual novel aesthetic, and removed the epilogue included in FES. Sad stuff all around. But it provided a great quality of life change in the combat department, allowing players to directly command teammates in battle, and it provided players the option to select a female protagonist, opening up a different perspective and new roleplay fantasy for the entire game. So I, like many others, started playing Persona 3 Portable back in January 2023, and I stopped playing shortly after that, not able to make it through the first dozen hours or so. You know, it's like I knew there was an engaging story, interesting character, and challenging combat to experience, but I just couldn't do it. Maybe I had been spoiled by P5 and P4 so that P3 was too much of a step backwards, you know, like, I had driven the Ferrari, and now I was being asked to accept a trade-in for my old Ford Focus. You know, or maybe it's Persona 3 Portable was too slow to get off the ground in the beginning, and my social media polluted mind doesn't have the ability to digest long-form content anymore. The thing is, all modern Persona games start off slow. 
and they're able to get away with it because the presentation, music, world, and dapper outfits of the main cast are able to draw the player through until the game lets you fully engage with the dungeon crawling slash life simulation juggling act. Persona 3 Portable, with its neutered presentation, couldn't do it for me. I felt disconnected from the experience, not being able to see my characters move around the screen, except when climbing Tartarus, which was just another dose of bland monotony. So with a heavy heart, I put Persona 3 Portable down, resolved to live and die only having played Persona 4 and Persona 5. Until in mid-2023, Persona 3 Reload, a complete remake of Persona 3 was announced. Relief washed over me. I had been given a second chance. Persona 3 Reload released February 2nd, and it's great. If you're looking for the TLDR, there it is. If you're someone that bounced off Portable and you're hesitant to jump back into the world, take it from me, someone who was in your shoes. Reload remedied my frustrations about Portable and fixed them. Everything oozes with an artistic flair. The menus, battle animations, victory screens, shops, even Tartarus, while still retaining the same struggle endlessly up through a similar looking dungeon vibe has been given a visual uplift and small additions to make it more palatable. Now, full disclaimer as I talk further, I have not beaten the game. I've played about 10 hours and I wanted to get this video out because one, I wanted to. Two, I actually had time this weekend to play and create this video. And three, by the time I fully complete the game, I fully suspect the algorithm and viewers will have forgotten about Reload. With this video, I want to mainly address the reviews I've seen claiming that Reload lacks soul with the visual overhaul it received. A quote from The Gamer, It has no soul, and this dwindling character can be seen as you roam the corridors or venture down to Iwatodai Mall for a spot of shopping. The music, characters, and general mechanics remain intact, while often enhanced. But it seems my nostalgic bond to the original makes it hard to appreciate what Atlas has done here, or at the very least, view it as the definitive version of this emo classic. Here's from Polygon. In contrast, the influence of Persona's 5 conceits leaves Persona 3 Reload in a state of inner conflict. The story and themes do most of the heavy lifting in maintaining a semblance of unique identity. It's striking yet memorable to explore such a bleak world with high schoolers constantly shown shooting themselves in the head with fake guns, a police officer serving as the main weapons vendor, and character arts that don't exactly result in happily ever after outcomes. Sadly, the tone is constantly compromised by a presentation that's too colorful, flashy, and refined for this material pushing for spectacle and fidelity over grit or atmosphere. It brings sophistication to an ambience originally renowned for its grim trappings. Their analysis on that front doesn't go much further. P3 Reload is shiny now, so the presentation is too colorful for the darker themes explored by the game's narrative. Case closed. That's fair. Everyone's entitled to their opinions but I wanted to provide an alternative perspective to the ongoing discussion for those interested in hearing or those who are potentially put off from investing in Reload because of this type of commentary. So look, I'll make an admission. I'm someone that liked Persona 5. Many people like Persona 5. Because of that, Atlas has responded with a plethora of spin-offs and crossovers in the wake of Persona 5's success. I think the lacking souls comment stems from frustration over the oversaturation of Persona 5 in the market. People have grown weary of P5, and anything that resembles it is now up for scorn. Stop giving us P5, the game journalists cry out. Isn't it possible P5 was always the artistic vision and goal for Atlas? Persona 3 marked the shift in that direction. P4 built on it. And with the success of the previous entries, Atlas had the requisite time, hardware, and money to build their magnum opus. Couldn't it be that Reload is the original vision of P3 now made possible? 
And how many more magnitudes of grimness and grittiness is P3 compared to its successors? When it comes to subject matter, I think all three cover the vast spectrum of darker material. Physical violence, sexual violence, emotional abuse, trauma, death, suicide, etc. They all have it in spades. Don't forget, P4 revolves around your party trying to hunt down a sociopathic serial killer. In the beginning, we're shown an animated scene of a dead teenager dangling upside down from a telephone pole. The first antagonist dealt with in P5 is an egocentric teacher that is sexually and physically abusing their students to the point one of them attempts suicide by jumping off a school building. All the personas delve into dark places. And yes, for those snickering that I don't know what I'm in for, I know how Persona 3 ends and the major plot points. I've watched the movies and listened to enough analysis videos that the through line is ingrained in my head as if I did beat it myself. Yeah, okay, but in Persona 3, the characters point a gun at their head to invoke their personas? That's so much more emo. Right, and in Persona 3 Reload, they still do point a gun at their head, and it looks 1,000 times better. I mean, have you seen the reload persona cut-ins during battle. The full screen eyes close up, the flowing hair, the persona shattering through to deliver a blow. Does the spectacle of this truly sour the grim trappings of the experience? Let's compare it to Portable's combat. It's the same sequence delivered in a much less visually stunning manner. Gun to the head, cut in, persona attacks. These types of facelifts pervade the experience without compromising the integrity of the original. The superb character designs are the same, but sharpened. The bopping music, remixed, is still bopping. And Tartarus, oh Tartarus. The bland hallways have been replaced with way more visually appealing bland hallways interspersed with crystallized shadow poops that you get to shatter with your sword. Gaming perfection. Now, if in Persona 3 Reload the evokers had been replaced with dandelions and the characters blew the poppas at the enemy, I would have some concerns. If the blue color palette had been replaced with a hot pink, let's sit down and talk. But those things haven't happened. Flashy and colorful isn't inherently in opposition to grim and dark. Now, it's not all sunshine and roses, or I guess doom and gloom in this case. I don't believe the critics highlighted this comparison, but I did want to briefly discuss the anime cutscenes. The anime cutscenes I've watched so far have suffered from a sort of sanitization, an absence of dynamic cuts and close-ups. The reload opening is playing now, and it clearly lacks the weight of the FES version. It fails to deliver the sense of terror felt by Yukari, no close-ups of her scared, dilated pupils, no trickle of sweat running down her chin. It let her whole sequence play out in one take without the running water and laughing children interspersed to build the tension. The same complaint can be lodged against the protagonist's first persona awakening when facing a shadow on the roof of his dormitory. It looks great, but it lacks energetic camera work or diverse use of colors. Even with that complaint, it's important to recall that I and many other fans didn't get the awesome cutscenes in the portable version. We got still shots, and me personally, I'll take reload over that any day of the week. In closing, it's possible my opinion will shift as I continue playing the game. It's possible if I was viewing the game through the lens of nostalgia, I would provide a different take on the remake. A lot of things are possible, but as of right now, I'm loving Persona 3 Reload. The game exudes its own identity and charm, its soul.